Hey guys, and welcome back to my accredited online university. Today we're going to watch some videos from two of our favorite and very, very popular internet users, Benny Peppino and Joseph Rogan, two of my favorites. So turn on your Chinese tchotchkes. <laughs> <laughs> and again, like every adult in America, I know every child in America has had the opportunity to get vaccinated. If you want to get vaccinated, get vaccinated. Right. I did. You didn't. But I think there's another distinction that the pandemic really exposed. There, there are two kinds of people, people who are OK with living with a certain level of risk and people who just are not and think that if they delegate all their power to people to make decisions for them, that all risk can be mitigated. And if that means controlling all the people around them, that's totally fine. That's a good point. Okay, Benny Gibagno is not the first guy who I've heard on the online saying this stuff, saying this exact kind of thing. Um, I guess the, the premise here is like the, the, these people, you guys who watch my channel and do this for me, you guys are a bunch of badass girl boss you go, girl. Okay, I still say that. Risk takers. And these other people who don't watch my show and do... <laughs> and do that and they and say... That is my own sperm. Those people are a bunch of kind of... I don't want to say wieners. I might need some help with this one. Because if you're dividing those two up, people who are comfortable with risk and people who are just too scared... There, there are two kinds of people. People who are okay with living with a certain level of risk and people who just are not. Wouldn't the anti-vaxxers go into the a scared one? Because that's the whole reason they don't want to get a shot, right? They don't want, that's the whole reason they don't want to get the Fauci ouchie. The Fauci, <coughs> many people call it. I, th I think I just need a little bit of clarity on that one. Keep that little smug. I, I know I am, I know I am. Keep, keep, keep that little smug. Because of the risk of something bad happening to you getting this vaccine. Very, very, very low. Okay? I done it. Very low. But we're scared. We're scared even of that, you know, basically non-existent risk. So that's a that's little bit of a problem for your, this division. It's funny, this, uh, this little division and this kind of like posturing, like, yeah, we're the tough, we're tough. We accept risk. The entire first 30 minutes of this video is Joe Rogan Never really fully explains, but dancing around why he's a scared to take the vaccine. So what do you what are you guys talking about? What? What are you talking about? What? What? Okay, before we get into this one, as you know, I comb through the comments of this, looking for people just going right past the nice ones and looking for mean ones. Videos and. One, one guy commented on a previous video, he's like, enough talking about the vaccine crap. Okay, so first, if you, you know, a couple days ago, I got a comment where a guy said, enough with the over-editing. And now we got a guy saying, enough with the vaccine crap, I don't want to hear about it anymore. So I would just like to say, you know what, you're right. No more of this. I'm better than that, to be talking about this all the time. You know, I apologize, my family apologizes to you. No more. We're not doing it anymore. No more. No more. No more. No more. No more. No more. No vaccine more, shots. No more. There's, there was, there was Chinese concern. data, and the Chinese data was showing yeah. that like nobody in China had gotten I it. I don't trust shit that comes out of Chinese data. That's fair. I don't trust That's any of it. I think there's so much nonsense coming out. I mean, look, look at what we tchotchkes. know now about the Wuhan leak or whether or not it came from a lab. Like, Look at what we know now about the Wuhan leak or whether or not it came from a lab. Like the, what, what we knew a year ago versus what we know now. It's amazing how much we opened up to the lab leak idea as soon as Donald Trump was out of office. It's like, hey, guys, you know, we've been going over these papers, and uh, it seems like that's kind of possible. Yep. So Joseph Brandon here says, oh, there's so much evidence now about this uh, leak, this Chinese tchotchkes leak. Look at what we knew a year ago, and now look at what we know now. So much more. Uh, like what, Joe? <laughs> so these people were demanding a you know an investigation into this look we think it came out of a lab because some pervert on youtube uh you know is is coughing that up so they demanded an investigation they got the investigation from the national intelligence council this was released pretty recently this is literally they have a a list of key takeaways this is literally the first takeaway on the list 
Four IC elements in the National Intelligence Council assess with low confidence that the initial SARS-CoV-2 infection was most likely caused by natural exposure to an animule infected with it or a close progenitor virus. That does not sound like a lab, Joe. That does not sound like a lab, Joe. What this report, you know, that the lab leak people were were demanding, and now, now they have, comes to the same conclusion that pretty much all virologists take, which is like, we are basically certain that this is an animal to human thing, but we, because we're scientists, we do we have not eliminated the possibility that this uh, came from some kind of laboratory. So, in in this report, they basically says they say we don't know where it came from, we don't know where they came, where it came from. Also, Ben's like, yep, yep, and uh, it seems like that's kind of possible. Yep, 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 yep. That's right. Yep. Yep, 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 boop, boop, boop. The only thing that's leaking out of China is Chinese tchotchkes. I just thought of that. I literally can you can you imagine imagine that I just thought of that. Uh, also, like just scientifically, the virologists who have looked at the virus are like, yeah, this is very similar to other bat coronaviruses. So that's why they're kind of like, yeah, this is probably it's probably from one of these little. What what is a bat? Is it like a flying ferret? No one's ever explained this. In the center yeah. of this anymore. But I do feel more optimistic. I don't even saw that, that uh, announcement about the University of Austin. Did yes. you see that today? Yes. Like, it's a cool thing. Yeah. Like, it's a bunch of people from a bunch of different mm-hmm. sides of the political aisle. You know, you got Larry Summers and Aideen Strassen. Then you got mm-hmm. Barry Weiss and Andrew Sullivan and Sorba Mari, who's very right wing. And you got all these people who are, are founding a university. It'll take them years to build. But they're trying to provide an alternative to a sort of propagandistic worldview that's being taught in a lot of, a lot of college camps. What, what is a bat? Okay, since they brought up the University of Austin, I guess we got to talk about it. By the way, it's funny because Ben Pepino, like literally minutes before he says, oh, the University of Austin, that's good. Literally minutes before this, he's like, uh, no one should go to college. The get get to work. Don't go to – college is just for indoctrination. By the way, like let's have a college with all right-wingers. But I was looking through this um, – through these board of advisors. Check this mother clucker out. David Mamet. David Mamet, one of the books, does that mean he'd, he'll teach classes? Had a right unlistenable dialogue. I'm just kidding. It's fine. Also, check this out. Lex Fridman. I'm sorry, but could you imagine paying $1,000 on PayPal or however, however you sign up for this thing? However you sign up for this piece of... And you're sitting there, you know, it's a beautiful day outside. It's still sunny. And you're sitting in some like shared office space. You know, you're looking out, out through the window, you know, you're seeing people playing basketball, living their life, holding hands, grabbing each other's tuchises. And what are you doing on this beautiful day, sitting in like a rented conference space in like a Hilton hotel, listening to uh, Lex Fridman, a drone about him and how him and Joe Rogan took Alpha Brain together once. It's funny, too, because they're starting this college because they're so censored. I can't say anything. Meanwhile, these people are, like, raking in. If you look at a, just a fresh YouTube account where you're not being, they don't know what you like. They're sugge- trying to suggest you things to, to get in your little, to crawl into your little brain, into your little noodle brain. I saw this a couple months ago, like a fresh YouTube account. You know what's recommended? Tuck Carlton. Tuck Carlton. I, I was flipping through TikTok, and sometimes I flip through stories or whatever that crap's called on Instagram. You know what I get recommended on there? Jordy Peterson clips all the time. So you know what I don't get recommended ever, have never got recommended on, on its own once on a fresh YouTube account or on a TikTok? Like a Jacobin video or a, or a gnome even video, okay? So... So there is definitely a viewpoint being uh, minimalized and marginalized, but it ain't yours, stupids, you idiots. Get more than in California. But don't you think that before the pandemic, the way that you interacted with the government in California was minimal? Not with the local government. Well, it was less invasive than it was, and soon. As well, soon po- as oh, they, yeah, post pandemic, it's me, crazy. Post pandemic, uh, it went nuts. From my personal perspective, for me, as soon I didn't even give a fuck who the mayor of Los Angeles was. It didn't matter until they shut down restaurants right. and comedy clubs, and then I was like, "How? What are you doing? Like, who are you? Well, who are you to tell people what they can and can't do?" So this is kind of the order 
of uh, events here in this conversation and giving them a little bit of a hard time. It's okay. You know what? It's okay. Just giving them a little bit of a hard time here. So Joe Rogan is like, is just too much. When faced, when faced with a global pandemic in which over 700,000 people in the, in the United States have died from, when we had to shut down restaurants, that was just too much. That's just too much. Gilbert Godfrey used to have this joke. He had this joke where he was like, uh, in Planet of the Apes, um, the apes are giving Charlton Heston a really hard time, but uh, when he loses it, when Charlton Heston loses it, is when some of the apes throw a net on him. <laughs> and Gilbert Godfrey was just like, "That's that, that was when it was too much. That's for some reason that was just when it was too much when those when those apes threw that net on him. That's when he snapped and lost it. Rest not being able to go to restaurants in L.A. was Joe Rogan's <laughs> was Joe Rogan's snapping point. And it, this is in the context of of Ben Shapiro just being like, "It's a, it went crazy. It went everything went crazy. I could not go. I could not go into the Vietnamese fusion restaurant." Things went crazy. <laughs> it. China is saying you're not allowed to go online certain days of the week if you're a kid. Right? We're going to ban the kind of stuff that you can see. So in the long run, which civilization is going to be more durable? The one that actually understands the vulnerabilities of human nature or the one that says we're going to use those vulnerabilities to make you feel subjectively happier? Then Shapiro goes, yeah, we're, we're just not a durable society. We're becoming soft. Look at China. Look at China. They make their kids drink out of the toilet. To make them tough. We've just become way too comfortable and complacent. Then then restaurants shut down. No! My goodies! Yeah, but why don't you just, you know, get food and eat it, you know, eat it at a park or something? I can't! Those are my goodies. I gotta go in there. I need people to serve me. If I can't get my boba and drink it inside the restaurant, I don't want to bring up World War II, okay? But I all I will say is that it is far worse than World War II. That's all I'm going to say, okay? This is amazing. This is the kind of... And, and by the way, these guys go on and on in this uh, episode about, like, echo. People got to get out of their echo chambers. Here we go. It's super upset that their son is into Ben Shapiro. I have encountered many of these women. These very opinionated, uh, always liberal, college-educated women who are furious that, is my that own they're sperm. sons. Well, Ben Shapiro says, and they do not want to hear it. What is it about these liberal women and Ben Shapiro? What? Like, why is this oil and water? What is going on? <sighs> I don't know. I mean, I, honestly, God, I don't know. I mean, like, I'm telling their, I'm telling their sons to like get married, lead responsible lives, yeah. go get a job. I, okay, there's, there's just so many. There's just so much here. Joe's framing of like these women. I call them kind of liberal. I don't know if you're familiar with that video where that lady is trying to call the police on that black guy in Central Park. Like women like that. I would say picture those in your mind. They don't like Ben Shapiro. <laughs> Sort of what I would call, this is a, a sociological term, sort of like nagging uh, women. You know, I'm just, I'm just a guy, I'm just a normal guy, you know, telling your kids to get married, you know, and to be responsible, and that climate change is a hoax, and abortion is murder, and poor people are lazy, and the coronavirus was created in a Chinese lab. Oh, whoa, 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 wait, 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 what were the last parts? This is sort of like when a salesperson says something like, our mission is to help people reach their goals, to get more out of their life by reaching their goals. And it's like, come on, your mission is to peddle crap. Okay? Don't pat it out. Come join our team. Our mission is to change our clients' lives, lives one at a time, one at a time, and to take them to the next level. And how do we do that? Oh, we peddle crap. We peddle them crap. If there had been no vaccine. And the answer, if there had been no vaccine, was... You tell everybody who is, say, 65 and up, you need to stay home. Then you tell all the school kids, go back to school because they're at very, very low risk. And then they get natural immunity, right? Then you tranche in the next healthiest group of the population. But the fear was the parents and the fear was also the people at the school that work with the kids. Right, understood. But you could Zoom, you could zoom the, ki the, uh, the teachers in. You could, the parents could wear N95s. The what? Well, Wait a minute. Zoom the teachers Zooming in. Zooming the teachers in, you leave that fucking class filled with children with no one there to supervise yeah, them? Yeah, you'd have like an 18-year-old supervisor. Zoom. All the college students were off. Oh, boy. They could have done that. <laughs> Beautiful. And I uh, this is one moment where I totally agree with Benny Propino on this one. Yes, please let the kids take over the school. 
So there we go. You know how they updated the Chucky movie? Like they made a new Chucky movie with uh, Aubrey Plaza? That would be the new Lord of the Flies. Is like, oh, we, we thought, we, we heard this online right-wing influencer. He said just to zoom in the teachers. There are a lot of people who had jobs who Listen, go was, to their jobs. It was the worst. Home. It was the worst. Like having, watching, I sat down and, and my kids went to a nice school, a private school. And I watched the fucking lazy ass teacher teach the Zoom class. And I was like, this is bullshit. I can't believe I'm paying for this. It was so bad. A lot of parents felt that way, by the way. Oh, my God. A lot was, of people took their kids out of school. But if you just sat and watched and you, the, the teacher didn't know that you were in the room like I did, you'd be furious. <laughs> what are these guys? <laughs> Everyone's scared. Everyone's scared. What do these guys got against teachers? Why is teacher? Why are teachers the in these guys' crosshairs so often? Can I ask you a question, Joe, really quick? Um when when you were watching those teachers, were they smoking weed and talking to Burt Kreischer? Were they, was that their job? Oh no, they were trying to maintain the attention of thirty uh, little wild animals. Dude, these teachers could never do what I do. They could never, never watch a video of a bear breaking the window of a car with Tom Segura the way that I do. You know what? Actually, the, probably the best episode of maybe any online uh, crap or podcasts or whatever, would be if, how come Joe Rogan's never, like, tricked Benny Pepino into smoking weed? Like, he could he could do it. If anybody could do it, he could do it. Ben Pepino's like, I'm re-examining things. <laughs> I'm re-examining, I'm looking at things through a different lens, and I don't like what I see. He'd be like uh, Larry David when Larry David smokes weed and he's just, like, yelling at himself in the mirror. You gotta change the diet. I told you about that. I don't want the red meat. You're eating a red meat. I don't like that. I'm doing the best I can. Go to a doctor. Okay, but uh, as it often does, this uh, conversation veers into some questionable, I would say just as actually, territory. Yes, I mean, it's you an can environment. Have, there, there are a lot of poor Asian communities where kids are studying their ass off, and that's why they're doing amazing in school is because they're studying their ass off. Like, That's a cultural thing, right? That I is mean, a cultural thing. I grew up around a lot of Koreans. So they're kind of dancing around, why, why are some people not, uh, don't, uh, not as quote-unquote successful or, or whatever? Ben Shapino goes from not enough fathers in the home to them, there are there are Asian kids studying their ass off. Then Joe Rogan goes into a story about how Koreans are the hardest working people he knows, and he knew a Korean guy who went to medical school and did karate or something. This might sound familiar if you ever watch, uh, you know, weird weird right wing channels like Benny Pepino and all this stuff. This is um, he's dancing around this a little bit, but uh, this is called the model minority myth. This is usually used as a way to, like, basically tell black Americans to go themselves. Like, this is really the only context that you ever hear this about, like, a a Asians, Asians are doing so good because of a culture of hard work. If you're comparing black Americans to Asian Americans, two very, I mean, let's, let's just keep it real. Let's be obvious here. Let's keep it obvious. Two very, 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 very different histories, okay? But... The funny about this thing, too, is just like Asians. We're just grouping all Asians, which statistically what they're saying makes no sense. If you actually look at different groups of quote unquote Asians, like they're just grouping all Asians together like it's like an 80s comedy movie, an 80s teen comedy. Like, oh, that's an Asian guy. No, oh, oh, where is he from? Yeah, I just said Asia, Asian, Asia. Here's just uh, just so you can understand what this means. Uh. Here's a little statistic. Bhutanese Americans have have far higher rates of poverty than other Asian populations, like Japanese Americans. So I don't know where why we're lumping all uh, uh, eight quote, quote unquote Asians together. So that's part of where the model minority myth thinks uh, falls apart. But yeah, whenever you hear this, it's always used by people like Benny Pepino as a way to be like these pe these these you know. These people need to pull their pants up and stop listening to that jazz. And then with variants, you know? And so the idea is that you're going to be able to give it to other people. But if the vaccines were effective, that wouldn't be a problem. Right. Well, the, the vaccines are effective at preventing hospitalization and death. They're not even, though. I mean, they're, they're, they're have, a lot more effective than not, right? I mean, right. They, but, more effective than not, but 
there's a lot of other things that people could be doing too that, is that would make sperm. them even more effective and those aren't even encouraged because they're easy and free what? like exercise losing weight vitamin d there's a lot of a lot of factors yeah but what these guys don't think about is like it takes a little bit of time to lose weight you know i'm trying to lose a couple lbs and it takes time it takes time and it sometimes you backpedal a little bit you're like hey maybe i'll just have one muffin you know i lost eight and three quarters pounds over the past six and a half months I'll have a muffin. And then you're like, oh, no, I ate six muffins because that one was so good. And you're like, oh, now I'm I gained back. <laughs> I gained back that entire eight and four fifths pounds and another pound on top of that. Like, that's what l losing weight can be like for a lot of people. In the meantime, you know, there's like a, a virus raging through the country. M might not be the best strategy. Might not be the best strategy. However, like Joe, Joe Rogan, you know, it, it's fine. He, he makes a, g a good point that like people should get in shape and stuff. But I actually like, I think the only way that I've ever, ever like lost a serious amount of weight quickly was I did an exercise program like years ago. That works. Like to have a bunch of social pressure around you and somebody bar uh, barking at you to keep going and all this stuff. It really helps. It really helps. So I have this idea where wh why have we never as a country considered like public fitness camps? Like if we're serious about this and it's Joe Rogan's crap, he's being serious. Why don't we have public fitness camps? You could go, you know, somebody will bark at you. It's free. This is a growing problem across all demographic groups, but it is not even by demographic groups, single motherhood is a major problem in the United States. If you if you want kids to be better educated, if you want them to take school more seriously, if you want them to do better in school, what every study shows, every single one so far as I'm aware, is that it's not even the presence of a father in the home, it's how many fathers are in the neighborhood. So this is a Roland Fryer study. He right. does <laughs> Maybe he missed some of the studies about SAT scores and that there's literally like a direct correlation between... Uh, family income and, and SAT scores. So maybe he's kind of looking at the studies he wants to see. But uh, what I love is that Joe, Joe just kind of like Joe. Joe's. I feel like Joe Rogan is in good faith. You know, he's almost like a like a kid or something. You know, who who will believe this stuff if it sounds good? Like I think that's why he he ha keeps having Joe. <laughs> why he keeps having Benny Papino on is because if he, if he sounds. I can't remember what the exact quote from Ed Wood is. If you look good and you talk well, people will swallow anything. Guys, I want to tell you a little personal. I want to tell you a little personal story from my own life. I'll tell you a little personal story. When I was a kid, I was... The only way to describe this is breathtakingly cool. And as part of that, I went to magic camp as a kid. And my magic camp friend, Mark, convinced all the kids at this camp all the other, I don't know, 12-year-olds or whatever, that he had a twin, like a bad twin. And what he would do is, like, go behind a wall or something and then put his hat on backwards and be like, oh, I'm the bad kid now. And all the kids bought it. I think Joe Rogan would fall for this. This is a real view, actually, into the, like, the right-wing brain and just how kind of, like, how sort of uh, sad their view of the world is. Here we go. Check this out. It's just like, not enough black kids are scoring well on the test. That means that black kids, I guess, are too dumb to do well on these tests. Get rid of the tests. Like, uh, or alternatively, there's an explanation where kids need to study more. Well, you, you only find out if someone knows things if you test them. It's the only way you find out. How else do you find out? You have to, like, say, show me how to do this problem. And then the kid tries and you go, oh, that's not how you do it. By the way, and, I think this is like entire. Uh, I think the scam that is college is predicated on society trying to get around the basic truth that you just said, which is yeah. we can tell by test scores whether you know things and are good at things. We got. How are we going to know? How are we going to know if you know the material unless we test you? And I totally agree with that. Like tests are a good. Way. Like I do. Like if I'm trying to memorize some crap, I'm like, oh, I'll do a little uh, a no note card or whatever stupid, stupid crap. You know. I wrote in a note card once. I wrote. I wrote, what is this? And then I turned it around the other side and it said, that is my own sperm. But uh, testing whether or not people have memorized things is not really what, what tests do in the modern world. That's, uh, you know, that part's okay. But what they really are is about, the, the stakes are way 
higher than that. And what, what it's really about test scores and all this stuff, which is why people get all emotional about it. I remember kids who scored bad on their SATs um, crying and getting all upset. And nye, 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 nye. So the stakes are ridiculously high. So it's not it's not just about did you memorize the material? It's a little Hunger Games. It's a little I mean, it's literally, uh, you know, what Battle Royale was based around. Uh, we could do better than that. Probably we can uh, figure out a way for everybody to live a, a good life without this uh, ridiculous uh, battle royale competition. So, guys, please uh, attend my class at the University of Austin. I will zoom in. OK, the class is for nine year olds only. I will zoom in and they'll be fine. They'll be fine. Well, guys, it is Friday, so don't forget to take Uber cars, fill them with all your Chinese tchotchkes. And if when you're taking those Uber cars, you know, you're eating a snack or something and you spill it on the Uber car, you know, the, the Uber, you spill it on the Uber car, see, just tell the driver, he's like, what is that that you spilled all over the, all over my car, say? That is my own sperm. Have a good weekend, guys. And bye-bye. Hey, guys, you're only getting a fraction of the weekly shows. If you want a new mother an episode every day. Subscribe on Patreon for as little as two bones. You get the patron only Tuesday and Thursday shows. The Book of Lega show where we look at important books and the goddamn weekly behind the scenes show. And for only 25 bones, you could become a producer and get your name up here. Look at these people. These people make this show possible. If it, wa if it wasn't for them, nothing. We don't have a show, we got nothing. And it's, go and it's garbage. garbage. And we have to just leave. We have to just basically walk away. And we don't even really know where we're walking. That's 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 the truly troubling part about all this. But please, become a patron today. For as little as two bones or if you or five bones is another level, or ten, or you go the full 25 and you get up here. Big special thanks to these people. Love you guys. Love you guys so much.